I want to tie in the symptoms for people. Uh, you know, some of these are, and in, in many syndromes and conditions, the challenge is the symptoms are quite nonspecific, but there are, or there's at least one partially validated questionnaire. Um, a few things I'll throw out there and, and definitely want to get your thoughts. Fatigue, although fatigue is not very specific, um, but when you see fatigue and joint pain and brain fog, and the way I've been thinking about this more recently, we were able to find a paper that also commented on this. If you're seeing more than three non-digestive symptoms, that, that can sort of start to give you a hint because obviously in our clinic, we will see a lot of abdominal pain, diarrhea, constipation, bloating, plus insomnia, brain fog, joint pain. So, okay, there we're thinking, let's look at the gut first and reevaluate. But if someone either after improving their gut health, so the gut symptoms are all or mostly gone, or they just said baseline present with a bunch of non-digestive symptoms, this starts painting at least a suggestion that there could be some sort of vector borne illness present. That's a really broad brush, but I would love to hear what, um, what symptoms or, or sort of presentation in particular starts to cue you in that there might be something with a vector borne yeah. microbe present. Um, you know, there, there, there are quite a few things, you know, the things that, that the patients come to, to us here um, really, you know, very, very commonly for uh, diagnosis and management of mast cell activation syndrome. So many of them, mm. some of them know that they've had a tick bite. Some of them know that they've had, but they've been told they're fine, you know, that, that that's not the problem. The problem is you know, their mm -hmm. immune system and they want to, they want to address it. And so we, you know, we start to, uh, you know, let's say we diagnose them, but they don't respond to treatment. You know, we're, we are working on, you know, we, well, Dr. Afrin may not have the functional medicine approach, but all everybody else here is sort of looking at it from a functional medicine perspective. We are looking at their gut and we're looking at their stress and their sleep and their food and all that stuff. And they're not, and we're, and we're targeting their mast cells, you know, in, in a, in a very systematic methodical way. And they're not responding, right. I'm going to start thinking about, um, I've, I've already thought about it before, but, you know, especially in patients who let's say are coming to us who already have started treatment and they're not getting better. You have to start thinking about what are you missing? What triggers are you missing? And one of the triggers is infection. And so that's why I have to, you know, I have to consider that. Um, I think that um, people who have symptoms that wax and wane, that um, mm -hmm. sort of travel all over the body, you know, um, that's always a little bit of a red flag that there may be something else. Mast cells can do that, but there's usually something causing the mast cells to do it. So mold and infection are like the two big ones that I'm always always thinking about. And even mold internally, so like yeast and candida is a huge issue for a lot of patients. And sometimes it's like the combination of all. So um, fatigue is such a general symptom. And I've certainly helped people with fatigue who, who, you know, we address their microbiome or, or we address, you know, some other issues, not always vector borne, but again, persistent symptoms right. that are also associated with migrating joint pain, migrating, uh, maybe neurologic symptoms. Neurologic symptoms are always a little bit of a, a, a clue. Um, acute presentations mm -hmm. of anxiety, depression, OCD, always on my radar that there, there may be something that's, um, that's driving the mast cells to do that. So I think mast cells are actually the, the part of the cause of those symptoms, but I have to look at what is causing the mast cells to become dysfunctional. And so I'm going to, you know, look at those things. Right. So, so I can't say there's one, you know, specific symptom because they're all different. You know, um, these infections are different. You know, Bartonella patients um, often present with, there, there, there's some classic symptoms, and then I've seen, you know, things that I would never have realized. Um, but, you know, they sometimes have feet pain. They sometimes have so, sort of the bottom of the feet. They sometimes have stretch marks. Um, they sometimes have difficulty losing weight. They gain weight very, very quickly. Um, they have some a lot of neuropsychiatric symptoms. Um Sometimes it's just anxiety. Sometimes it's mixed with some of the other things. Um, you know, that's going to kind of clue me in a little bit. Like, okay, I know mast cells are here, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look for that. But you know, Bartonella has got to be. We gotta, we gotta rule that out or rule it in, and, and figure out how we're gonna address it. So there's some things that a little bit have that like flavor that helps me, you know, determine. Okay, this is the direction. Right. 
But, you know, I have a skewed view of the world because of where I'm practicing and also the patients that come to me. Sure. So, you know, what I did a, I did a uh, retrospective uh, look at my a chart review and I presented it at ILADS, uh, I think last year and the year before. Um, ILADS is the International Lyme and Associated Diseases Society. I'm, I'm now on the board and I presented um, basically a, a chart review to, to look at the my, to look at my numbers, like how many patients have mast cell activation syndrome? How many patients also have Lyme or Bartonella or Babesia? And it was like 90% of my mast cell patients also had a vector-borne mm. infection. Mm. So that's a, that's a, that's a yeah. huge yeah. number. And it's saying a lot with the fickleness of, of diagnosis. Was this all based upon a laboratory diagnosis or was it a clinical diagnosis? Well, or, you know. Based upon symptoms, was All it a marriage lab, of the know, two? I, I needed to prove that they had laboratory evidence. So, right. so this okay. was laboratory proven. Um, now, again, they're, not all of those patients um, are going to require antimicrobials, antibiotics, but a fair number will. Again, you know, I'm really trying to peel that onion away, and everybody's onion is different. The layers are different, and they're in different places. And for some, the Bartonella is the top layer. And it doesn't matter what I do with anything else. I've got to deal with that first. And sometimes it's much deeper and I won't get to it until I, you know, do the rest of the work. So it's, yes, it's, uh, it's complicated.